Uh, I am Professor Iqbal Mughal, Head of Forensic Medicine Department. Last time in the previous lecture, uh, I have been discussing about the medical ethics, meaning by the various ethical aspect of practice. These ethical aspects are quite a different thing other than the various laws which control our practice of medicine. They guide us how to behave with your patients, how to behave with your colleagues, how to behave with your teachers, interaction with the various other situations like with the employer, with the state, and all these things are being covered under this situation. So, in the consolidated form, a document has been given which is based upon the Hippocratic Oath. Hippocratic Oath is basically an old document which describes the various medical ethics. You must be clear in your mind, the legislation, the laws are given by the government, whereas the ethics are being prepared by the or, or opted by the medical profession itself. So, the medical at various time during the life or the history of the uh, era, different era, different type of code of ethics have been given. Hippocratic oath is an old one and it is more popular. This, old, this Hippocratic Code has been opted by World Medical Association. World Medical Association has confirmed, uh, it has converted into a simplified language. And now they have given its name as the International Code of Medical Ethics. International Code of Medical Ethics. Our council, the Pakistan Medical and Dental Council, they have accepted this International Code of Medical Ethics. And we are following this International Code of in the last lecture, I have given you the details <clears throat> what is being given in this International Code of Medical Ethics. It is the same code or the statement which when you enter in the college, in the medical profession, there is white coat ceremony. At that time, every student while entering the medical college they accept this code of international medical ethics. So this is this code is being accepted by all the persons who joins the medical profession. So so many things are formatted and written in that. Now coming to the next. <clears throat> There are certain situations during the medical practice which has also to be evaluated in the light of medical ethics. And these various situations which we are being confronted with, these are the confidentiality, euthanasia, artificial insemination, 
organ transplantation and biomedical research these are the very very situation we are confronted in day to day practice how we evaluate or to tackle the situation in the light of ethical practices so firstly i will take the professional secrecy or the confidentiality what is confidentiality in arm or it is an ordinary english word to keep something secret or confidential professional secrecy whatsoever information you get in the professional capacity you have to keep it secret or confidential <clears throat> so a physician should not disclose information received in a confidential context whether this sort of information is obtained directly from the patient the information being caught from the patient during history taking or this information may be gained as a hospital manager <clears throat> the hospital manager the ms of the hospital ms of the hospital he is in the senior capacity he has access in any ward any access to any patient he can check the file of every patient because he is he, he is the overall supervisor of the hospital so he can get information in that capacity as well a, or during review of a paper sometime uh, you review a research paper the research paper is basically the collection of data and that data is based on the patients and the information pertaining to the patient is being present in that paper if you are uh, re reviewing that paper in other words you have come to know certain information about the patient so in all these situations you become knowledgeable about the important information which which is of confidential level for that patient you get it so this information should be <clears throat> kept confidential except in certain specific circumstances where a doctor carefully and selectively disclose information where health or safety of the public at large is important in that situation the doctor can reveal information but there is criteria for that so first important aspect is the to maintain the professional secrecy so the practitioner whatsoever information he has obtained from the patient it is advised that he should never gain any form of benefit from that information he should not blackmail the patient from that information he has which he has got from the patient similarly the medical record of the patient should not be left unattended unsupervised it should be properly possessed and it should not be handed over to any irrelevant person only it should be communicated or conveyed to the patient or his representative uh, when he is unable to collect that file then he can send his nominee or the relative, the person who can be represented so this this is the advice for the medical man how to keep the information with him 
the, the doctor is not bound to convey the information if he got the information of concealed birth, venereal diseases, or some uh, person has committed suicide, uh, uh, attempted suicide, or someone has committed abortion. So all these information should be remained with the doctor. Until unless the situation has become so grave, the person on whom the abortion has been committed he is about to die or actual death takes place. The person who, who, who tried to commit the suicide, but actually he, he committed the suicide. So similarly, the other things which, which are when reaches to that extent, it should be given information to the law authorities. No, I have told you mostly the first prime duty is to keep the information with the doctor, not to be revealed. But there are certain situations where doctor has privilege to communicate information to the concerned authorities, not to the public at large, to the relevant areas. So he has to watch or to see there are two situations privilege mean by meaning by it means that he has right to convey qualified or absolute qualified mean when he it's that information where it is relevant or he can convey the information to their relevant authorities. Absolute, when there is no excuse, he has to convey. Now, coming to the qualified, where doctor decide that intimation to the authorities is in the best interest of the society. Generally speaking, the state has no right to demand information from the doctor about its patient, except when the person is suffering such sort of problem, which may be a threat to the society. For example, the person is suffering some cholera. The cholera is a disease which can spread to the other people if the hygienic care is not taken. So it is direction from the government, health department, when you find the cases suffering from some communicable disease, then you must intimate to the district authorities. Similarly, sometime a patient is referred to you from some organization, for example, a person who is working as a cook in some hotel. So on the after the examination, if, if you find that person might be suffering from some diarrhea or, or cholera type of illness, he might be suffering from enteric fever type of illness, he might be suffering from tuberculosis. All these diseases are communicable diseases. So when this person is referred from the administration or the hotel manager to you for your opinion or for examination. Now, in that situation, it is your duty to inform that the hotel manager, your employee engaged in food serving, is suffering from this, this disease. And this disease, he may be a reason to spread that disease. So, this person may be lay off from the duty so that the society may be protected. So this, this is the example of the qualified privileged patient. <clears throat> that doctor decide himself where is the situation where he should convey or where he should not convey. He can decide. So this the second aspect is the absolute. 
again the situation here the information you can reveal or convey the absolute communication this is the authority of the courts court can ask any sort of information whatsoever doctor knows about a person a presiding judge may despite the physician claiming that the knowledge and communication is confidential can overrule this contention and order or direct the doctor or as if he is hearing as a witness in the court of law to provide the information so the doctor has no option but to comply unless he is willing to accept imprisonment or punishment for the contempt of court so in when the doctor is in the court and any sort of information pertaining to the patient is asked by the court he cannot decline if he will conceal the information at that point he will be guilty of contempt of court so so the absolute privilege to convey is for the courts qualified privilege to convey the information is with the doctor and he decide the information which information to be sent to the concerned court the person suffering from some communicable diseases the authority is the district health officer he should be intimated and similarly if the person is referred from some institute then that that concerned head of at that institute may be intimated that your employee is suffering from some communicable disease now this was all about the village confidentiality and the situations where you can have the marginal discretion you can reveal information to the relevant court or in other words you have the privilege to communicate coming to another topic <clears throat> euthanasia euthanasia in our society it is not prevailing much it is not commonly seen <clears throat> but in the world it is prevailing and what is that it means to bring about gentle and easy death another word is also used for that mercy killing so under what circumstances or what are the situations when such need is required the person beg for the end of life so it involves the use of some means to take the life of one who is suffering from painful and incurable disease the person is sometime in such a condition there is no hope of recovery and person is in extreme degree of agony he is in a painful condition so he he, he does not want to continue his life so such sort of demand if whether the end of life should be carried out or not it may be demanded by the relatives in cases of incurable diseases they are exhausted they don't want to see the agony of the patient sometimes patient himself cannot bear the agony of the disease or illness and himself request to the authorities the usually such sort of request goes to the court in which the court is requested to give permission to him 
to get physician assisted suicide in the, in which the doctor may give some sort of injection or injectable in which is what may be stopped so this concept of euthanasia now debate is that whether it should be done or it should be done here the ethical aspect comes whether it is an ethical action or it is not an ethical action going to the background why this concept emerged from which society this concept emerged the first time it was advocated by the plato and it was practiced under the roman emperors even in the old ancient marseilles authorities were approached to get the permission for euthanasia for the persons who were suffering from serious incurable diseases so that was the situation where this information was asked so under these circumstances the previously it was the historical background now if we consider the ethical aspect of uh, this euthanasia if you if if you have uh, uh, i give you the reference on this topic of euthanasia if one indian movie was made you some of you, you might have seen guzarish the person was suffering from it became bedridden and then he applied to the court that he don't want to live further he was given permission and ultimately he ended up his life now coming to our ethical aspect what should do socio cultural and religious traditions of our society have influence in such sort of cases what is our religious dictate hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that nobody should desire death because of some act kisi bhi takleef ki surat mein kabhi bhi apni maut ki khwahish jo hai wo nahi karni chahiye so this is our direction from our prophet whereas if you consider the other religion like christians the christians ideology or what they say but their religious perspective they say they say that god the human being is the creation of god and no one has the right to do deprive of an innocent human being from his life so the principle has been accepted by all the courts by that human life should be given respect as a doctor when we consider about the hippocratic oath what we promise we promise i will maintain utmost respect for the human life from the time of its conception right from the time of conception right from the intrauterine life we maintain the respect for life that's why abortions are not permitted only therapeutic abortions are permitted similarly here the euthanasia causing death of person is not to be expected from the doctor now coming to the presently who are the people they claim that this euthanasia 
can be exercised. It is being done in the Western world. What they say, what are the, the supporters of this concept of euthanasia? The current advocates for the practice of euthanasia say that the pace of life has been picked up so much that during the last two to three decades, the time and money has taken over as a superior to the idealistic values of reverence and veneration. Respect for life has been overlooked. The time and money is considered to be the superior. So, what they say that it is the wastage of resources to treat a person who is in the state of terminal illness. What they say that it has been calculated that about 40% of health expenditure is incurred on the treatment of the terminal illness. So this is the concept of the person who are supporter of the this concept of euthanasia. So as a medical man, as a religious background, uh, Islamic background, so it is not acceptable in our society. But in the Western society, this is being carried out. The, the courts are being approached to get permission for the end of life request. So this was about the euthanasia. So these are the two aspects I have discussed. One is the confidentiality. Another aspect I have discussed about the euthanasia. As your time is going to be completed, still we have uh, another uh, two topics, three topics. We will continue these topics in the next lecture. That's fine. Wishing you all.